Amen. It does my heart good to be back here at St. Paul on this Sunday. It does my heart good uh, to the pastor of this church, Pastor Robert Johnson. God bless you, my brother. Um, to my wife. Last night, I forgot to say <laughs> that was my wife last night. But to my lovely wife, who sticks by me through thick and thin, she's a headache, sometimes a thorn in my side. But I thank God for her anyhow. To my cousin Trish, uh, she's from Jamaica. And she didn't think it robbery to come to church on today to hear her little cousin speak. And I thank you and I love you. To my sister Ron and to the people of God, it does my heart good just to be back here, like I said once again. This morning, I come with a message of hope for this church. Many know that I used to live here. Many know that I used to sing with the gospel choir, community choir from this area. Many know that we used to rehearse here at this church. But I come with the message of hope today, a message of restoration today. Because what I see, sometimes it grieves me to understand that the church, no one, no, 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 no one no longer loves coming to the house of God. No one understands what it means to say, for God I live and for God I die. No one understands what it means to say, let's go to the house of the Lord one more time. But what I've come this morning is with a message of hope for St. Paul. I want you to listen to what I'm saying today. Please don't look at, don't sit in judgment of what I'm saying, but take it to heart to say, no matter what come or go, I'm going to make it. And then look at it as saying, God is saying, no matter what's going on on the outside of St. Paul, I got you. I've come by on my way to heaven to let you know that in the midst of all that has taken place in your life, all that is going on around you, God is still right there with you. No matter how it looks, God has your back. You may never understand the move of God and how he moved, but God has you. And he's making you. In the Bible, it says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. One thing I never understood is how a conference or how a jurisdiction or how a prelate can come in and say, I'm removing you from this assignment. But my question is, is God moving you from this assignment? Or is man moving you from this assignment? Let me get back to what's on the paper. Here in the book of Daniel, we have heard about these three young men. And for a long time, we have joked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me give you a little bit of education history on Daniel, the third chapter. So you have to realize that these three young men, they were they are not boys. I want you to get that out of your theology and out of your understanding. They were young men. See, boys back in that day were, were between the ages of seven, where well, you were born a boy, but they considered you to be a boy between the ages of seven and 13 to 14 years old. These young men, they were actually tax collectors. They had a title. They had a status behind their name. So they were not boys. But from, for many years, they have preached three young boys. No, they were young men in the providence of Babylon. And so you have to realize that when you have a status behind your name, people watch you. People look at you. And the first time you do something wrong, somebody got something to say about it. St. Paul, somebody has something to say about it. It's time for you to regain your community. These three young men, they were the type of young men that had pulled. People 
looked up to them. People admired them in the province of Babylon. But here in the book of David, the third chapter, these three young men, their faith was challenged. St. Paul, your faith is being challenged. There was a king that gave a decree, the king with the little K, not the big K. And he said, at the sound of the music, at the sound of the heart, at the sound of the, of the drums, you are to bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. And this, it was a graven image. Some of us today, we do what? We worship our cars. We worship our bank accounts. We worship our spouses, our children, just like that image that was built in the province, in, in, in the courts of the center square. This image was built. This king, he had fear in a lot of people. He had fear in people to say, no matter what the king says, I'm going to do what the king says. The king is God. The king, if the king says we ought to bow down, we ought to bow down. But let me tell you, I serve the king with the big K, not the king with the little K. And some of us, we have to understand, these three young men, they were not poor, that they were somebody in the province of Babylon. So they understood who the king with the big K was. But somebody repeat after me, there is always a snitch in the camp. This was this snitch when 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 the when 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 the music when was started blowing and the horns started blowing, somebody had to be uh, uh, the snitch in the camp. See, we always have snitches in the camp. Pastor, be be very careful and cognizant of the snitches in the camp. Just like they come and tell you something, they go back and tell the bishop something. As like they tell the bishop something, they go back and tell the council something. So guess what? There always is a snitch in the camp. Let me get back to what's on the paper. Your lifestyle. Speaks for you. Your lifestyle tells your story. But there's always a snitch ready to stab you in the back. St. Paul, you have snitches in the camp. See, the lifestyle, the focus point of this church. When I lived here years ago, this church, this building, this emphasis, stood out in the neighborhood. You had people walking to church. I said, I can't even walk because I, I'm from the inner city. I don't, I don't know that walk thing. <laughs> so I would get in my little Saturn and I would drive to church. And this church, I would come by and visit at times. This church was like no sitting room. People was in here praising God. Musicians on their, on their instruments. Verse 25, I will have to say in the midst of all what you're going through, God has a way of showing you that I got you. You see, in verse 25, it said that uh, 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 they, they understood the vernacular of they threw three people in the fire, bound down in all their clothing. But let me put a pin right there. Let me back up some. Let me show you just how, how powerful God is. Because so you have to realize something. No matter what you go through, no matter what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through, they got this big soldier to do what? To toss them into the fiery furnace. But you have to realize, at that, at that appointed time, the soldier was burnt up. At, at that appointed time, when he threw them in, he was burnt up instantly. See, that's the, that's, that's the kind of God we serve. He don't have to come through tomorrow. He don't have to come through next week. But see, if you're sincere in your prayers, if you're honest with your prayers, the God that you serve will come through just like that. But you have to understand that, like I said, for the God I live and for God I die, you have to be sincere in your heart. You have to be sincere in what you're doing for God. We have all fallen short of God's glory. None of us are perfect in our walk. 
on our talk, but guess what? At the end of the day, God still said, I got you. Here in, the, here in the Bible, we see that these three young men was tossed in the fiery furnace. Even the king said, you know what? Since you don't want to listen to me, I want you to increase the heat of the fiery furnace. When it gets hot, we need to give God praise. When we don't understand what's going on, we need to give God praise. If, if, it's, if it's seven times hotter, we still give God praise. St. Paul, it's time to give God praise. If it's just three of us, still give God praise. If it's, if it's a thousand of enough, still give God praise. We have to understand that no matter how it looks on the outside, God still says, I got you. One thing that I learned growing up in, 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 in the Kojic lifestyle, it was you have to understand something about people. People will come and go. But anytime you get confused about what is going on in your life and you believe in God, the same way you chastised me as a child, chastise the word of God. Listen, well, I can't chastise God. I believe in chastising God like this. God, you said in your word. You will never leave me nor forsake me. God, you said in your word that I done lost my wife, but you left me a comforter. I'm a chastise God at his word. I'm going to question him at his word. Let me get back to what's on the paper. Who here at this appointed time is in a fiery furnace. St. Paul, you're in a fiery furnace. I can say that. I don't need my, my sister to call me and tell me we're going through. I can say that. I can see that when I chime on Facebook on Sunday mornings and I and, and I don't and the pastor don't get but two one or two amens. And then I'm at work and, and I'm putting up on a big screen and, and, and people say, well, 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 Bishop OG, is anybody in the house of God? It's time to show the world. If it's 10 of us, we're still praising God. Now I'm gonna give you a reason to pray, pray God. Just praise God. Just give me a few more, a few more round goals. In your fires and your tribulations, just know that the other person is God sitting next to you. No matter how it looks on the outside, God is the other person sitting right next to you. Shadrach, Meshach was, was, was in a fiery furnace. By being in a fiery furnace, what happened? Guess what? Nobody knew, but in a fiery furnace, sometimes you have to mark like a soldier. You have to let your words be your bond and mark like a soldier. No matter what's going through, Lord, I need you right now. God, I don't know about my husband, but Lord, I need you right now. Lord, my wife done left me, but Lord, I need you right now. Lord, at the end of the day, there's so much calamity going on, but Lord, I need you right now. In the midst of your fiery furnace, you don't have, you, you don't have two nickels to, to rub together, but Lord, I still need you right now. I can't pay my rent. Lord, I need you right now. Lord, Lord I don't for food in the refrigerator. I need you right now. And see, as you're marching, and you giving God praise. Lord, I thank you. From I need to God, I thank you. You have to understand something. No matter what you do, you have to be thankful for what God has done for you. Thank you, God, you ain't burned this building down. Thank you, God, that you have given us a pastor. Thank you, God, we still have members. Thank you, God. I am still here in the land of the living just to give you praise. Thank you, God. You took me from Jamaica to Florida. Thank you, God. You took me from New Jersey to Charleston, South Carolina. Thank you, God. You have to be thankful in the midst of your fiery furnace. Well, who are you to say what we're going through here at St. Paul? I just proved it to you. 
I just prove it to you. As a church, as a family, it's time to come together. A lot of us have forgotten about the walk and the strive that it took for us to get here. Some people have turned their back on the church. If you say, well, Bishop, I'm the church. Okay, they have turned their back on you as being the church and as being the building of the temple. I have a little bit of education. I, I shouldn't say that because my mother is watching me right now because she's going to get on me. I have a lot of education, but let me just say, this is the temple of God. This is the house of God. You are the church. My second point of this message is knowing that listening to the voice of God, my question is, do you know the true voice of God? Do you know the voice of God that to the point where you know from Satan to God? Satan has a way of come and tickling your, 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 your eardrum. Satan is like a Trojan horse in the middle or a time of deception or deceitful. He's very deceitful, like the Trojan horse. He knows exactly when to come in and infiltrate this church house. He know exactly and who to bring in, who to talk to, to hurt this church house, this house of worship. He knows. He knows. So many here today love to recite, and and, and I like this. And, and don't 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 take that. I'm, I'm putting you down on your on your on your education. But see, let me just say this. We love to say. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And so many say that in, 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 in the air of, I've heard my mother say it. I've heard my father say it. I've heard the pastor say it. Then what the pastor say, well, stand up with me and let's recite Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. When you say it, but my question is, now here it's back in the face. Do you understand what you just recited? Do you believe what you just recited? You said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Do you believe you can do all things through Christ? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? And you say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But do you understand what that means? Because a lot of people, they recite it but they don't understand it. We love to quote other things that other people say, but we don't understand what we're saying. The quote is obsolete to some of our vernacular of education. We do not want to understand because someone else is saying. For, for many a years, I would hear people say, my grandmother prayed for me. Pray for yourself. I've, I've heard for years preachers say, if, if you, uh, the Bible says, go to the elders. But what, but, but what about you praying for yourself? What about you laying hands? Well, well, Bishop, I can't lay hands on myself. Well, why can't you? You can lay hands on that fork to feed yourself. If you can lay hands on a fork to feed yourself, now I'm about to really go outside the church. If you can lay a, your hands on a bottle of gin and juice, guess what? You can lay your hands to anoint yourself. If you can lay your hands on a man that's not your husband, guess what? You can anoint yourself. If you can lay your hands on that woman that's not your wife, you can anoint yourself. All you got to do is say, Father, in the name of Jesus, no matter what I'm going through, God, heal me right now. Let me get back to what's on the paper. We have to understand you can lay hands on yourself. And see, so this, is, this is what I don't understand, Pastor. You know, me and my sister, we talk every day. And when we talk, we, we have a laughing time. We have, we have a, a fun filled laughing time. Because see, when Corona hit, nah, 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 don't y'all get upset. No, don't fuck my car tires. It's a rhythm. My sister, she had that mask thing. My mom said, I'm going to wear that mask with a mask, a mask, a mask, a mask, a mask. But it was funny to me how the people that, 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 that go to church every Sunday, 
the people that, that, that believe in God. Now, I'm not saying it's nothing wrong with wearing a mask, but what I am saying is this. If you could go to Walmart, Target, uh, 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 what's, that, what's that beef? Longhorn Steakhouse? If you go down to the corner store, to the beauty shop, to the barber shop, why can't you come to church? Why can't you come to church? I, I, I don't understand that. We can do everything else but come to the house of God. But you say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Why didn't God, why did you believe that 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 that, that quote when it was time to come to the house of God? You you, you believe that to get up and go to work. See, see, we we see and, and, and I'm let me put a pin right there. I used to have a job in North Carolina and I was uh they said I was the H N I C. And people used to say, if you come to work late, you get fired. So they would say in church, you can't make it to church on time because you you are, what's that, CBT or what's that called? CBT time. And they say, you always to work on time. And they said, if anybody here ever is on CPG time going to work, raise your hand. They laughed at me. They said, you were late going to work? Yeah, occasionally. But guess what? I was always on time in front of the church. If I had to do 75 in the 40, I made the church on time. I said that to say this. No matter how fast I was driving, God had my back. I believe I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. For Bible study, I was on time. For, for choir rehearsal, they have better been on time. Because I was the choir director. But we have to realize that no matter what we go through, God has us. God has us. Sometimes we forget that. Corona came through, scared everybody. Had you buying bleach, toilet paper, <laughs> Tissue stuff, uh, 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 was it Irish Spring? Had just buying, uh, uh, what's that, the, uh, the Murphy's oil? You ain't bought a can of Murphy's oil now one day in your life. But all of a sudden now you buying Clorox, you buying uh, Rock the Chlor, you buying uh, the offset name, Fabulous, you want to write down everything. That too, Microband, spending all your other money up. You go to the grocery store, you couldn't get now one iota roll of toilet paper. Everybody buying them all up. Say, he about to smack me. Say, because I'm about to do it. Say, he about to smack me. Here we go. You went crazy about Corona, but when was the last time you went crazy about God? When was the last time you went crazy about God? When was the last time you invited somebody to the house of God? When was the last time you visited the sick? When was the last time you called Mother Iota? Because guess what? She couldn't make it to church. But guess what? When Corona came, we went crazy. Beat me up because I gotta make my flight tomorrow to get back to South Carolina. You know, I was sitting at work one day, and on my job we have Major Harris, we have Captain Brown, we have uh, Captain Die, Lieutenant Williams, Lieutenant Green, uh, 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 Sergeant Watts, Sergeant Harrison. These all these they got them big titles. And one thing I can tell you about the people that I work with, because he, first of all, Major Harris, he is the first African-American woman in the juvenile jail in, the, in Charleston, South Carolina. First African-American woman. Only African-American woman. That's a major. When they say, I got you, they got you. No matter what go on in, shoot, in, in, in that jail, when they say they got you, they got you. I know that my sister, when she say, if you need anything, I got you. When I was sick, my sister would say, okay, do I need to get in my car and drive to 
So I stopped telling her now, or should I hold off? I said, hold off. I'm saying this to prove a point to you. St. Paul, it's time for you to get up and allow Pastor Johnson to see that you got him. And just like I'm, 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 I'm getting on you, I'm going to get on Pastor Johnson. Just like this. I'm a bishop in the Lord's church. But Pastor Johnson, now it's time for you to get up and get on your people to let them know that you got them. There shouldn't be no council, no, 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 no bishop, no, 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 no district people, no district elder can come in and guess what? And tell you, you're not doing your job. Because God says, I got you. You preach God's word. God says, I got you. You are here on your grind. God got you. No matter how it looks, guess what? You have graduated in God. See, we have to understand that no matter what come or go, God got us. Here in the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, Peter and the disciples were on the boat. How many disciples do we have in the house? See, when they was on this boat, the boat today is like the boat back then. The church is the boat. The church is the confusion. There was confusion on the boat. And you have to realize, no matter what type of confusion is going on in this house, in your house, the crack house, the alcohol house, the corner house, the drug house, guess what? God says, I am God. And no matter what kind of confusion you're going through, you have to realize that if you are heavy laden, he says, I will give you rest. I, singular, you're talking about yourself, I, I tell you, I have some education. I have a lot of education. You see, my mother's on here and I don't want her to choke me up no more. But I have a lot of education. You say I, meaning yourself. I didn't say we. I said I. He says, I will give you rest. So no matter what you're going through, you have to realize that uh, 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 no matter what you're going through, God said, I will give you rest. So if you're heavy laden, a uh, St. Paul, it's time to give it to God. If you're going to stand up, or shut your mouth. You're going to cry out and spare not. But you have to realize that in this life, in this body, God is looking at you. He's looking at the pastor. Because it starts at the head. And when the pastor is wrong, that's between him and God. When you wrong, and the pastor won't rebuke you or, or correct you, then guess what? That's between you, God, and the pastor. Hebrews 13 and 15, I mean, 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me turn the corner now and come to your front door. And I'm almost finished. We have to let God be God in all God. Know that God is still here in the midnight hour. God is still saying, huh, just hold on another day. I'm going to hold on to you, God, in spite of all that I'm going to. When your money is funny and your change is strange, just know that hold on. God says, I got you. I don't know where my next meal is coming from. Hold on. God says, I got you. When, the, when you're in the courtroom, not looking at time, but you're looking at time and time again, God says, hold on, I got you. Your daughter may be in trouble. Your son may be in trouble. But God says, hold on, I got you. St. Paul, I don't know how it looks in the outside of others, but God says, hold on, I got you. We've been made Lord for a night, but your joy is going to come one morning. The Bible says, I'll let you a comforter. So St. Paul, hold on. God says, I got you. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I got you. Hold on and don't give up. It ain't time to throw in a towel. If it's three or four, gather in Jesus' name. He will be in the midst. Hold on. I got you. You've been in a hospital on your bed of affliction with issues all in your body. But God said, just hold on. I got you in the midnight hour. At a midnight and a normal day, just hold on, I got you. 
Can't sleep on your job. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. God said, just hold on. I got you. You had to look at this. COVID-19 took out many loved ones. But God said, hold on. I got you. Your, your, your doctor said, you're in stage four cancer. God said, I get the last say so. Hold on. I got you. Like I said, we can be a door for a night. But your joy will come in the morning. Hold on. God says, I got you. I got you, St. Paul. I got you. Many have come and many have gone. But God says, hold on. I got you. I don't understand what it looks like right now. But God says, hold on. I got you. You don't understand something. Let me, let me, let me just say this here. This message of hope came to you. I know I went all the way around the mall, baby Bush, to let you see, to give you an understanding of how powerful God is. Sometimes we don't look at what God has for us until it smacks us in the face. And I tell people this, we, as the body of believers, we can't give up so easy. We give up too fast. I was on the way to church and my cousin was talking to me. And, you know, she had that strong Jamaican accent. And I understood perfectly what she was saying. I want you, I want St. Paul to understand perfectly what I'm saying. I said to the church three years ago, the next time I come to speak, I want to see a greater amount of witnesses here in the seats. I don't know if y'all remember. I have a good, I have a good, I have a good memory. <laughs> and the reason why I just bring that up is this: if you sacrifice. If you sacrifice what you believe in and you just hold on to God's unchanging hand, you will see how God got you. Sometimes we have to go outside the walls of the church to, to, to show other people who we are and whose we are. But just know God says, I got you. And if nobody come, you can say either Full In or Dr. Parham or, or Bishop OG or whatever you want to call me. I did what God says the Lord. And sometimes we have to realize when you take that one step, God got the other. He'll, you, 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 you want to see him how he orders something and it increases? I have a bishop on the West Coast. Bishop Alan Carpenter. I'm going to sit down after I finish with this one. And my last point. I'll be on the phone with him. <laughs> And when I tell you, hold on, God got you. Now, if there's any educators here, you can't go to a student and tell the student, lift your dirty hand and tell God, I thank you. You can't do that in school. Well, Bishop Howard Carpenter works at a high school. <laughs> and if he was here right now, he could bear witness to this. I put a phone with him. And somebody do something wrong here, say, come here, come here, come here, son, come here, son. Lift them dirty hands and say, God, I thank you. Lift them dirty hands and say, God, God, forgive me. As we work on people, God works on them. The ones that cuss them out no longer cusses them out. So you have to realize when you when, when you show God that it's about God and God says, I got you, I will never leave you nor forsake you no matter who come or go. St. Paul, you have to stand up and believe what you believe in. God says, I got you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if it's 10 people here, just know it's 11 people here. Because God is sitting right here in the midst. Let me leave this word of encouragement and hope with you. Just know that you are never alone. Alone. The God you serve got you 
in the midst of everything that you go through. The God that you serve, the mindset that you have, you have to understand that no matter what come or go, God got you. And I'm going to say this, and I hope she don't beat me up walking out the door. There's a young lady that's sitting, that's, that's here today. Every time I'm, I come, I've actually seen her. I've seen her. And when she comes in, she rolls right on in. And she still is in the same wheelchair. That speaks volume. It speaks volume. Because no matter how, what's her dilemma, guess what? She still came to the house of God. Now, if she just came today because I'm here, guess what? Like I said, that speaks volume for me because she's here. Get your grandkids up. Get them off them games. Get them off them cell phones. If they can go out and party on Friday and Saturday, they can come to church on Sunday. So in the midst of all that you're going through, just know that God is in control. We all have to keep fighting a good fight of faith. And know that no matter what you go through in your fight, God got you. God bless you.